Hey, this is Ellie Mae with Silhouette Secrets Plus, and today I want to give you five tips when you are working with the Silhouette Auto Sheet Feeder. The sheet feeder is designed for print and cut projects and to be able to cut multiple sheets in your Silhouette machine with a Cameo 4 model or a Portrait 3 model. So I'm going to have more information in the description below, as well as links on how you can get it set up, but I wanted to give you five tips so that you can be successful with your Silhouette Auto Sheet Feeder. The first tip is that you will need to make sure that you're using a Silhouette Studio software version that supports the Auto Sheet Feeder. The first Silhouette version that supports the Auto Sheet Feeder is version 4.5.152. However, there are some bugs in that version, and I would recommend that you use at least version 4.5.155. As of the release of this video, that is the current beta version. So I'm going to show you a couple things here. First, in order to check your software and see what you are currently using. If you are a Windows user, you're going to go up to the top left to help. If you are on a Mac computer, you're going to go to the top left under Silhouette Studio. You're going to choose About Silhouette Studio, and then it's going to give you a little window that pops up. This tells you your current version. So you need a version of 4.5.152 or higher in order to have the sheet feeder options. You will notice that your software changes a little bit if you were on an older version, and you now have four different categories in your page setup panel, and it gives you the option for your sheet feeder. I also want to point out that if you had to update the software, that you are also going to need to do a firmware update. Firmware updates are completed with the USB cord. You also have to have a USB connection in order to use the sheet feeder, and we'll cover that here in just a second. So first tips, software version, you wanna make sure that you have a, a version that supports the auto sheet feeder, and make sure that you are aware you're going to need to update your firmware if you had to update the software. So if you needed to update your software, you're going to go out to the Silhouette website. You're going to click on Software, Get Software, and then here is the current version that is released. Again, version 4.5.152 has some bugs that were corrected. And I would recommend that you click on learn more and here you can download the beta version. This is only if it hasn't been already released. If you're watching this months or years down the road, there may be more current versions. So you would select the current version in order to use it. But at a minimum, you have to use version 4.5.152. So if you click here and download, it'll give you the options to download the beta version. This is the version that I am currently using. Typically, I don't recommend beta versions for the average user, only because there can be unknown bugs in that version that can pop up or be presented. However, due to the bugs that are in the current version, I would recommend the beta version if you are watching this any time frame around um, when it is created and published. Tip number two is you have to connect to the auto sheet feeder with the USB cord. It is the only way you can use the auto sheet feeder. Here is a photo of the setup with the cords. I have a link in the description below on the videos on how you can set up your machines. But you have a cord that is connected from the Silhouette machine to the auto sheet feeder that is a USB cord. And then you have a cord that is connected from the sheet feeder to your computer by USB. This is the only way that you can use the Silhouette Auto Sheet Feeder. It does not work by Bluetooth. So you will need to make sure that your computer has the USB connections that are needed in order to connect to that sheet feeder and make sure you have any adapters that you would need in order to connect by USB. Tip number three you are going to need additional space in order for the sheet feeder to work. Here is a photo of the setup of my sheet feeder.
you will need clearance in the front where the sheet feeder can sit fully supported on a table. There are two little feet, and here's a close-up photo, on the front underside of the sheet feeder. These need to be pulled out to fully support the sheet feeder, and those need to be securely on the workspace. If it is on an uneven surface, it may not function properly. You will also need clearance behind the machine, and this will be dependent on the length of the print and cut that you are currently doing. It needs to be able to clear behind the machine at least for the, the length of your material and then be able to pull in and out of the machine front to back. So you need clearance not only on the front, but you also need clearance on the back for any machine that you're using. For the Cameo 4 models, the auto sheet feeder will pull the material back in and place it underneath the sheet feeder when it's done. For Portrait 3 models, it shoots it out the back side of the machine. And I laugh because I kind of find that funny. But you are going to under, need to understand that you need clearance on this machine. It is not gonna be able to be supported on a rickety table. It's not gonna be able to hang in the air. The Silhouette Auto Sheet Feeder needs to be fully supported on the table, in the front, and for the machine completely. You also need clearance in the front for not only the sheet feeder, but also on the back side so that the material can roll freely in and out without hitting anything. If the material hit is something in the back side of the machine, such as a wall, power cords, or anything else that hinders its movement, it can cause the material to jam in the silhouette machine, or your print and cut could be off. Now, tip number four is the page setup. When you are printing any materials without a mat, you have to set up the auto sheet feeder very, very specifically. So you do not have a mat selected when you come over here and I'm gonna show you on the screen because it's much easier to see on the screen and may be able to show you the differences. With the auto sheet feeder, I'm going to choose it here in my menu and then my cutting mat is set to none and I'm going to use a letter size sheet of paper. In the description below, I will also post links to the specifics on the Silhouette America website on the page sizes that the sheet feeders can use. There are currently two different sizes of sheet feeders, one that operates with a Cameo 4 12 inch model machine and one that, that one and the Portrait 3 are the same size. There is another sheet feeder that is for your Cameo Plus machines and your Cameo Pro machines. Each one of them will have different settings for what size paper that it can take. It is a sheet feeder. That means that it's designed to be used with materials that are sheets. So your standard letter size, 11 by 17, A3, A4, all of that. 12 by 12 if you're using the Cameo Pro or Plus. So you wanna make sure that you are using a compatible material. So I am just going to choose letter here. And this is what it looks like on my screen. So when we go over here to our registration marks, there are a few things I wanna point out. If I choose registration marks and I choose on, it's going to put those registration marks for my print and cut on my page. You're going to notice that the inset is grayed out. You cannot change this. When you are using the sheet feeder, you cannot move your registration marks. The only thing you can do is make your registration marks thicker or decrease the length, which I do not recommend, especially if you are starting out. To give yourself the best success, you should use the defaults. If you are currently having issues with your silhouette print and cut and you have modified these settings, I would recommend going back to the defaults. You can click restore defaults and print a test page with those defaults to try to eliminate some of the issues that could be causing your print cuts to be off. The reason that you cannot move the registration marks with the sheet feeder is it is very specific in that it needs space on the left 
and the right edges to roll into the machine. It does not have the mat to hold onto, so it has to grip your materials. So you need clearance on the left side and the right side for your material to roll through the machine securely. You also need this inch of space down here at the bottom in order for the machine to hold the material inside the machine as it cuts towards the bottom. If the material is too far or the cut were to be too far close to the bottom of the page, your material would just fall out the backside and your cut would be a dud. This happens all the time when you're not using the sheet feeder and somebody tries to trick the machine. It needs this space to hold that material underneath the rollers or it will fall out of the machine. So I'm going to give you a, an example here on screen. I'm going to pull a guide down here. So I have a letter size sheet of paper. I'm gonna pull a guide down and my guide, if I close my window here, tells me that it's at 10 inches. So my letter size sheet of paper is 11 inches long. My bottom registration mark is set at 10 inches. It is very important when you are printing and doing a print and cut without a mat that you print exactly as you need it. If you have a mat set up, it prints the registration marks differently. And I'm gonna show you that here on the screen. So if I come over here to set up a print and cut normally, I'm going to choose manual. I'm not using a sheet feeder. I'm gonna choose Cameo 12 by 12. You can see my Mac comes on the screen. When it's looking for the registration marks with a cutting mat, it allows for this excess space at the top of that mat. So whether you're printing we're doing your print and cut with a mat versus without a mat, it makes a difference in where it's looking for those registration marks. With a cutting mat, it gives this space before it starts to look for your registration mark. This is one of the things that I see when I troubleshoot issues, is if someone has set it up to cut without a mat accidentally on the screen, but they are really using a mat. So the next thing I wanna show you here is if I turn these registration marks on, the default registration marks, as an example, if I pull a guide down here, are at 10.375. So when you are cutting with a cutting mat, your registration mark can be closer to the bottom of the page because it has the cutting mat to hold the material inside the machine as it cuts. If we go back over here to our mat list, it does not have a mat to hold in the machine, so it needs to hold on to the materials on the edges. If you get too close to this bottom, your page is going to fall out the backside of your machine, and there's nothing you can do about it. It'll be half cut. So tip number five is your material thickness matters, and also if you have any curled edges or static paper, that will affect if the auto sheet feeder will feed properly. So I have tested a lot of materials lately and I will put up the link to my blog post where I list all those materials in the description below. But I have cut all types of the Silhouette printable products. I've cut Staples brand sticker paper. I have cut HTVR Ront sticker paper. I've cut a brand that didn't work. I will have that information in the blog post. Um, I also tried the Oracle printable with the UV laminate. That didn't work, it was too thick. Um, you really, I, what, the best thing you can do is test for the materials that you have. The Oracle with the UV laminate was too thick and the wheels on the auto sheet feeder could not pull it through at the rate that it needed to be in order to proceed with the print and cut. So all it would tell me was that media was jammed. So if you run into issues, start looking at your materials. The other thing I noticed was if your printer would curl a corner or the material were to curl on the edges at any point in time through the printing process, then your pages may not feed through the Silhouette sheet feeder properly. It has to be very specific 
in how it pulls that material in and it has to be absolutely flat. Static can make a difference because if your sheets are sticking together, it's not gonna be able to pull those sheets through the machine at the rate of speed that it needs to. Another thing that curled corners or curved um, materials will do is you'll notice when you go to start your print and cut, when it pulls it into the machine and it hits the rollers, if it bends a corner or it folds over too easily, that was the sticker paper that failed on me was it was too thin, then it will not work well and the paper just gets jammed into the machine because it cannot feed properly. My biggest tips for you are to test it. Whatever materials you are using, test it. Do some test ones before you have a pro big project or a deadline that you are trying to use it with. The more you use the auto sheet feeder, the more comfortable you will be with it and you will determine if your materials are going to work well in it. I hope these tips have helped. There's gonna be a lot more information in the description below that will also help with the information on getting you set up with the auto sheet feeder and give you an idea of the materials that I have tested in my blog tutorial as well. Thank you for joining me. Have a great day.